On this episode of How to Make Dinner, I'm gonna show you how to make the best shake and bake cauliflower. It's so good. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of How to Make Dinner. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today I'm making shake and bake cauliflower, which is one of the best things I can't believe I haven't been making forever. It's so, so easy and so good. Since making this the other weekend, I just started to wish that I was a sports fan so that I could invite people over to watch sports because I just feel like this is the most amazing sports snack like to watch the football game or the soccer game or something but i don't even have cable people can't come over and watch sports they can come over and watch cooking shows <laughs> you know but i feel like it's not quite the same thing anyway i'm gonna make this shake and bake cauliflower for any occasion where i'm asked to bring a snack i'm gonna make it for myself on weekends on weekdays i'm just gonna make it all the time i just love it so super easy to make i'm starting off with about this is about a quarter of a head of cauliflower but it was a pretty big cauliflower so i've got about 10 l fairly large florets and then that's component one component two is a cornstarch mixture so i'm gonna take four tablespoons of cornstarch i'm gonna add in about half a teaspoon of garlic powder and it seems like a lot, but this coating is gonna flavor the whole cauliflower. Uh, and about a teaspoon of salt. Again, seems like a lot. And then I'm gonna add about the same amount of water. So four tablespoons, but I'm gonna start it a little bit less. I basically just want it to be just like a thin pancake batter. Cornstarch is so weird. Like when it's slightly too thick, it does this weird gloopy thing. <laughs> we used to call that magic mud when I was a kid. We would just make some and play with it. So that's still a tiny bit too thick. So it really is about equal parts water and cornstarch. That should do it, that tiny amount. Yeah. That's perfect. Okay, next is the breadcrumb component. So I have some fresh breadcrumbs here. I always use fresh ones. I wouldn't recommend dried only because I haven't tried them yet. If you wanna try it, let me know how it goes. But I like fresh, mostly because they just really cling. Like when you're working with something that's solid like cauliflower, it's kind of hard to make anything cling to it. You know, when, when you've got like a chicken breast or meat or something soft, it kind of like embeds into it, but cauliflower doesn't really allow for that. <laughs> so I do like the softer breadcrumbs. You could definitely add Parmesan cheese to this. I'm not doing that today. So the process goes like this. Take the bowl with the cornstarch mixture, dump the cauliflower into that mixture, and just kind of tumble it around. You can use a spoon and the key here is just to get all the little nooks and crannies filled with that cornstarch mixture if you've got gluten-free people you can definitely use gluten-free breadcrumbs and that'd be perfect so you might have to get your hands involved to get this really coated and then once it's coated with the cornstarch you just go straight into the breadcrumb mixture. And this is the shake and bake part. I mean, you could do it in a paper bag, like the true shake and bake, or you can just do it in a bowl. Just give it a good toss. And you should get a really nice crust on your cauliflower. And then it's just a matter of rolling them around and getting them on a baking sheet. I like to use a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. I thought about using a rack to kind of elevate the cauliflower so that they would brown evenly all around. But then I realized when I made them without a rack that you get one edge 
one side of the cauliflower that's right on the surface and it gets super crispy. So the side that's in contact with the pan gets extra crispy and it's like an extra delicious treat. They coat pretty nicely, especially with these soft breadcrumbs. Just get them onto the tray. Make sure there's lots of space in between. I started with about a cup of breadcrumbs, by the way, and I still have a few left over. And you can really like work the breadcrumbs in if you have patience. And that's it. I'm just going to throw these into a 425 degree oven for about 25 minutes and then I'm going to eat them. <laughs> okay. So I forgot to mention, I do like to do just a little bit of a drizzle of some kind of oil on these cauliflower right before they go in the oven, but just a drizzle. If you have like an oil sprayer, that's even better because then it gets nice and distributed. But look at these cauliflower. <laughs> They're so nice. They're so crispy. And you can see that the edges that were on the pan got even crispier. Oh, look at that one. Oh my God. The only thing that's left is something to dip these suckers in. And if you're anything like me, the dip is kind of an important part. Today I have a little bit of tomato sauce from a jar that I just heated up and then added a little bit of spicy chili oil to. But I put it out there on Instagram the other day and you all had some serious opinions uh, about dipping ideas. So I'd love to continue that conversation in the comments because you had some really, really good ideas for dips. When I made these on the weekend, I made a little mixture of my homemade apple chutney with yogurt and dunked them in. I also had a little bit of a spinach dip moment and also my sour cream and onion dip that's on the blog would be amazing with these. So that's it. That's my <laughs> shake and bake collie. Take a big dip. I could honestly eat a whole head of cauliflower if it was done like this. Mm. That's it. That's it for this episode. I hope you like my cauliflower. Mm. Sure. I hope you like my shake and bake cauliflower and go ahead and make it and tell me what kind of dip you want to dip it in. And thanks so much for joining me on another episode and I'll see you next week.